Greetings, everybody. It's good to see all y'all faces again. Yes, sir. Hey, Mario, before we, uh, before we get into football talk, can you uh, kind of let us in on what you've been doing with your, uh, your academy lately and uh, what's kind of the latest with that there? Oh, thank you for asking. So um, our plan is to launch the first Devoted Dreamers Academy, which will be uh, an individualized, it's, it's an alternative to traditional education school. It's focused on individualized education, understanding that we all made uniquely. God has given us all gifts and calling those gifts, gifts out and being um, uh, entrepreneurially minded with that. So understanding how you can identify solutions, I mean, identify problems, create solutions, and then monetize those. So we want to train our kids to be entrepreneurs. And then it will be an elite sports-based school. So it will be a school that's founded by athletes. I got 11 other NFL athletes behind me with the school. Uh, so a school that's founded by athletes, predominantly for athletes. But it won't just be sports focused, it'll be beyond the sports. So there are more careers than just on the, on the, on the game field. There's sports medicine, there's sports science, there's sports media, there's the business of sports. And so those are all alternative career pathways. So our, our, all of our athletes, we want them to, to have all the ancillary opportunities available to them. And so that's what we're creating, doing the first one in New Orleans. And uh, it'll officially be launched in 2023, the fall of 2023. And in the fall of 2022, we're doing a year long after school program that'll be open to an elite group of 40 students. And so we're excited about that. It's coming together real smooth. Thank you for asking about it. Is this, just to follow up, this is like a school that, this isn't like where they go to school. This would be where they go to school. This would be where they go to school. It would be a private school. Um, yes, and as I said, it would be an alternative to traditional education. Um, we've been lucky and fortunate to have some great partners come on. It'll be a fully accredited school. Uh, the education curriculum that we're using, kids have already been using that curriculum and, and have been going to schools all the way up to, to Ivy League schools. And so most kids that graduate this program um, traditionally go to the top universities in the country or go and start their own businesses. That's how equipped they are coming out of high school. And so we're excited about it, being able to partner that academic curriculum with our sports-based curriculum. So it's going to be real interesting and really exciting. Oh, uh, amazing. We, our goal is to put um, one in every state. We only want one because we want them to compete with the best schools inside the state. Um, and the first one will be in Louisiana and it will be in New Orleans. And we're going to do it in the Ninth Ward. Our, our mentality is if we can succeed here, we can succeed anywhere. And um, there's none deserving more community. So we're excited about it. You know, the first day of pass is always interesting. Uh, you want to fly around and you want to have fun, but it's the first time that you really actually get a chance to play real football again. The rest of the time, it's, it's, it's all seven on seven pretty much. And I'm a fan of seven on seven. Uh, anybody who knows I have my own seven on seven team, but the game of football 11 on 11 is one in the trenches. And so getting a chance to, to do nine on seven, you know, allowing our fronts and uh, our front offense, front defense, to go at each other is always good. And so um, I thought it was a lot of thudding going on out there. Um, but in this game, you never can be physical enough. You always can be more physical. You always can be faster. You always can be tougher. And that's what we're chasing. For us to reach our goals, we got to be the we got to be the fastest, the strongest, and the toughest. Tomorrow, how do you think people are going to work to get back? And just, I'm sure there's frustration not being Yeah, I mean, it's tough um, to come into camp and not be able to go. Uh, that happened to me when I was a rookie. So I know that's challenging. But there's nobody I'm more excited to see out there on the field uh, than Pete Werner. Uh, what, a, what a phenomenal year he had in his rookie season. I know he's excited to come back. A smart football player, a tough football player, um, knows how to make plays on the ball. So just exciting to see the next step he is able to make uh, in his progression in his game. Our team needs it, and so really excited. But also excited for the other linebackers we got in our room. We got a, we got a lot of guys. Who are, who are looking to prove themselves and have the ability to do it. So it's going to be an exciting year for our room. Uh, kind, of, kind of related, uh, we're getting our, kind of our first look at Eric Wilson. What's, what's kind of stood out to you about him so far? I mean, he's played a lot in the league before, had a couple big years. Yeah, I mean, he's coming uh, off of, you know, not this season, but the season before, where he was one of the top linebackers in the league, multiple interceptions, I think 122 tackles, a uh, bunch of sacks. 
that's really what you want. If a guy can fly around and make tackles, if he can create ball disruption, if he can get to the quarterback, that's all you can ask for in a linebacker. And so he's already shown that he has the capability to do it. Don't know what happened in the, the year after. Um, maybe just wasn't a good fit, but now he's here and he's shown that's why he was able to make those plays. I mean, he's a smart guy, just came in, picked up our system quick. He flies around and make plays. And so he, he definitely gives us uh, what we need in our room, um, which is if, if, if something happens to a guy and he has to go in, we feel comfortable, confident in him to be able to get that done. And uh, who would you say brings, uh, brings more juice to the practices? And nobody bringing more juice to me. That's first of all. <laughs> all, right, all right. <laughs> but 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 no, Coach Haji, he preaches that every day. Uh, I think the reason why our linebacker group has been able to make the progression that we've been able to make is because he he preaches that every single day. He he he, he preaches uh, energy and effort effort every single day. Uh, he preaches physicality. Uh, he wants us to be dominant at the point of attack all the time, and he preaches ball, get the ball at all costs, and so. Uh, the fact that he's always harping on those things, that's why we're able to go around and, and, and bring a lot of electricity for our defense. That's our, that's our, that's our responsibility. Mario, obviously you're seen as such a leader, in the, not only in the linebacker room, but just on the defense as a whole. What does that leadership look like specifically during training camp? Oh, that's a great question. I mean, our, our goals are so high. Um, coming off the type of year that we had last year, where we faced so much adversity. Um, it was like storm after storm after storm, literally. And uh, with injuries, not having our top guys, and then having a chance to compete at the end, and then falling just short, not, you know, because we didn't get it done, but because the, the chips fell how they fell. But now coming back in, you kind of want to ride on that momentum. I think we want to keep the resiliency, but that's all that we can keep because you have to build it from the ground up. That's something that I learned from Drew when I got here. He's like, every year you got to build it from the ground up. And, and that's what we are. You, you tear the house down and you start brick by brick. And so what we're laying right now is the foundation. And uh, we got a lot of our core together. You know, kudos to the front office and, and, and getting us all the right pieces. Um, not only did they get, it, get good pieces, they got us the right pieces. When you got guys like, like Marcus May, Tyron Matthew, Juice Landry, those type of guys, the guys that they got in the first round, they got guys that love football. And that's what, that's what New Orleans Saints football is built on, guys who love being in the building. Um, you know, when we're here joking around, I'm sitting beside Marcus May, he watching film. That's what you like. That's what you want. And so they got the right guys. And so it's about taking all those pieces, building the right chemistry so that we can be the team that we know we can be. And right now all we can do is lay the foundation. And um, by the time we get a chance to put it on for the public display, we got to be ready. And, and we get that by days like this. When it's hot outside, grinding, finding ways to get better. What does Marcus specifically bring to the team? I know you guys were only teammates for a short while, but um, what does he bring? What do you think? Um, in my 11 years of football, I would say I played with three great free safeties. And that's not to take away from any other, anybody else that I played with, but I had the opportunity to play with Ed Reed, I had the opportunity to spend a lot of time around him, learning how to watch film and stuff, uh, just just away from the game. Marcus Williams and Marcus May. And Marcus May was in that conversation when I met him as a rookie because I could see his range. I could see his his ability to, to tackle in open space. I could see his ability to read concepts. And, you know, free safety is different than strong safety. You know, it's so much about being able to keep a roof on the building. And he has that. He has that range. He has that ability. And he's only getting better. So, I, so the things that I saw in him while he was young, he went on to, you know, build a career on that. And so, um, you hate to lose a guy like Marcus Williams. But if it was anybody else that I could have picked, Marcus May would have been in that conversation. So, definitely excited about that. Hey, Mario, we talk about the qualities you've seen in Dennis Allen as a defensive coordinator that you think will help him succeed as a head coach. Uh, Da is probably. One of the smartest guys I've ever had the opportunity to be around. And I've been around a ton of coaches that I've learned a lot of football from. Um, he has great ability to study teams and know what they're going to do and understand situations and put us in the best situation to be prepared for those situations. And uh, it's because of the way he's constantly thinking through that 
and then uh, preparing us not only to, to be able to anticipate and be aware of it, but to be confident in what we're doing about it. Uh, it was interesting, you know, we had some guys that were just talking about, you know, some of the defense, like, maybe we should do this, we should do this. And I'm like, listen, guys, just trust the system. It works. You know, don't, don't ask no questions. Just know what your assignment is because I know DA, our coaching staff, has done everything to put us in position to win. And now you can see that his mindset trickling over to the offense and the special teams. And that's just our identity. We're going to, we're not only are we going to know what our opponents are going to do, we're going to be prepared for it. And we're going to put the energy and the effort and the passion behind crushing it. So that's what he brings to the table. And how has, if at all, the co-defensive coordinator structure impacted things for y'all on defense to that effect? I mean, our, our system and operation is, 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 is the same. It's just DA not standing in front of the room talking. Uh, Ryan is in the front of the room or Chris is out there on the field calling. But our operation is so, you know, so much of the same. Um, you know, it's really like a family operation. You know, it's like everybody kind of know their role and they just fall in place and do it. Um, so it's not, not much has changed. You know, in this game, man, it, it, it's, it's very easy to uh, get excited about guys or get down on guys. And it's just a game where you just want to keep taking the next step. You just want to get 1% better every day. Every year, you want to get a little bit better. And clearly, you can see if you've been watching practice, he has taken the next step as a cornerback. And that's exciting. He had a great rookie campaign. And you could tell he's already, he he's not stopping there. He's taking the next step. He's, he's progressing. And so, um, you see guys like that, and you get excited about them. You see them come in. You never know what you're getting with a rookie. You had some in first rounds that, that, that end up fanning out. You had some come in undrafted, and they, they end up killing the game. You never know what you're getting. But he's a guy that wants to be good. He's always in the building studying. Uh, he's always after, on the field after practice getting work in. So you know he loves the game and wants to be good. And so I think the sky's the limit, and he'll have every opportunity to be but excited about the next step of progression that he's made. Tomorrow, uh, I know this Sam Dillon is a four-year time. I understand that. He's going to the Hall of Fame this week. That group, the Dillon Patrol, kind of had the legacy here. I mean, have you ever taken time to appreciate their legacy, what they did here in the organization? Oh, man, that's the greatest linebacker core to ever come through the NFL. Uh, you got to understand that. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm somebody that spent a lot of time uh, you know, studying the greats, Mike Singletary, uh, Jack Lambert, Lawrence Taylor, all of that. And so Dome Patrol, so being an opportunity to not have to look around the league and mix and match linebackers, but to have it all here, you know, and to be able to come behind that, being able to rock the number of one of the greats that come through here, you know, it's just, it's just an honor. And so you just want to build on, on a foundation that's already been laid, but that means everything. Um, so, um, yes, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a tremendous honor, you know, for me to be playing here behind the greats. And you just want to carry the baton forward, you know, and I want to leave it better. They pass it on to, to Vilma. Vilma passed it on uh, to guys like myself. And I got to make sure, or we got to make sure we pass it on to guys after us. Yeah, we, we talked about that before. You, you appreciate legacy. I mean, where do you think your all's Our book is still being written, you know. That's how I look at it, and that's that's. We have to appreciate that opportunity. Is every other defensive legacy, uh, the Steel Curtain, uh, uh, the Baltimore Ravens defense, you know, uh, the '85 Bears defense. When you look at all of these great defenses, even 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 the Dome Patrol, all that history is already that book is closed. Our book is still open, and so every day we got an opportunity to get better. We got an opportunity to chase greatness. And that's why we can't let no practices slip. We can't let no preseason games slip. Can't let no games slip. We got to go because we're trying to be the best. And, and, and why be here if you're not chasing being the best? And that's what we want to be. So, you know, I'm, I'm telling our guys, we're not, we're not just practicing against our offense. We practice against every other team in the league because we're trying to be the best defense. Not just this year. We're trying to be one of the best defenses ever. That's what we're chasing. And we got an opportunity to do it. You look at our resume, what we've been able to do and getting toward a quarterback and stopping the run and being 
you know, top five, top ten year after year, it's like, why not go be number one and not and just run away with the race? And that's but the only way to get there is putting the work in. And so just because you have the opportunity or just because you have access, you still got to go create the opportunity. So we got access to the number one spot, but we got to go we got to go create and make that opportunity. So excited about it. Well, I mean, when you look at it and you got you got top 10 players on multiple levels of your defense, you don't have no choice but to because it's not that easy to just assemble that type of talent on the team. When you got one of the greatest defensive ends that will play the game in Cam Jordan, one of the top corners in the league in Marshawn Lattimore, uh, one of the top end DBs just all around, when you got Tyron Matthew, Marshawn Lattimore, uh, uh, Marcus May, Ducey, Young Adebo, Roby, I mean, when you got guys like that, on your secondary, and then you got me in the middle. You know, it's like we got to put it all together. You got guys like Big O, so you got multiple guys that are top guys at their position. That you, it's gonna be hard for you to go find five other guys that's better than them. And so, just because you have that talent, now it just comes down to the work ethic, the effort, the desire, the, the willing to prepare to win. It comes down to all those intangible things. And so, it's on us to make the choice every day to do that. We can't just roll in and think just because we roll out the bed that it's going to happen. And that ain't how it's happened up to this point. That's not how we got to top five. It's because we came in and put the work in every day. So all of us are sharpening our skills individually, and that allows us to sharpen our skills collectively. And on top of that, we got a great coaching staff. So it's a lot of fun. Thank y'all. Y'all be blessed.